Hello and welcome to episode four of Find Your Voice with Marisa. I am joined today by a very good friend of mine by the name of Jan Moxen, who has been breaking boundaries in the music industry for many years, as long as I've known him, which is since 2012, but even longer than that. And he is a cellist, a composer, a multilingual vocalist. He sings in 20 plus languages. I mean, I think you have me beat, my friend. And he is just one of the most prolific and busy artists that I have ever known. So with that said, how are you today, Jan? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for inviting me to do this, Marisa. Of course. Thank you so much for being here today and also for providing this beautiful background with, might I, I, might know, I mention, right? a double rainbow. <laughs> so I really wanted to come here and talk to you today a little bit about how you've readjusted during a global pandemic. You know, I think when everything started at the beginning of this year, it was a really tricky time for all of us as artists, but for all of us in the world, you know, as, as a people. So I want to know first, you know, what your mindset was when this all started and how you kind of adjusted your life around this. Well, I, I didn't really have a mindset to begin with. I live, um, I don't even have a television uh, uh, in, my, in my home. So I know less than an average person about what's going on in the world. Okay. It's sort of part of my trade, like in order for my music to be a, uh, the way it is, it needs to be detached from everything else and I kind of need to be detached. So I only had a very um, basic idea about the whole pandemic, so my tour was uh, about to start in Russia uh, around 15th of March. Uh, so I was like, hey, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm going with it, I'm, it's happening no matter what. So I was flying out and there were already people in masks and I, I didn't even have a mask at, at the time and um, you know, I was, I was going to rough it out sort of and then it, as, as it went on uh, I realized very quickly how serious it was and uh, sort of I started the tour and as I was like I played the city and then the next day the city would close down completely and then I played another one uh, they closed down day after and then I finally reached the point where my next destination was already closed down and uh, I was actually stuck in Russia with the, the, that there was no more uh, flights in and out uh, borders were closed so I I sort of had to stay there indefinitely Wow um, so that was a bit of an adventure of mostly good things an adventure to say the least and yeah. now we know one of your secrets living in like the 18th or 17th century no TV um, that's one way you can connect with the music and just disconnect from all of the madness. So. Right, yeah, exactly. The madness is, is what I have to stay away uh, from uh, because I feel that's what my uh, my thing is giving people music that is void of that whole madness thing, like for them to be able to get back into that other state without madness. Yes. Even if they were watching TV and were uh, outside in the world the whole time, they can go home or they can you know, turn on their iP um, iPod and uh, on, on the bus or and train and listen to my music and like get into that other place. And so, I did, by the way, tune into your meditation music from the Red Room. Um, I know when you were <laughs> back home in Russia, so I, I found that incredibly beautiful and therapeutic in a sense. Thank you. Uh, so I know for a fact because so many people are writing me every day and have been writing throughout the pandemic how important it was to well, many of them this in finding that uh, inner peace and uh, that's probably the main reason why I kept doing it throughout the whole pandemic so I was giving these free uh, live streams almost every day because I was getting an incredible amount of mail every single day from people asking say please keep doing it we really really need this so even I, I was feeling burnt out I was feeling like I just want to put, chill, put the cello away for a month and not touch it and um, there's reasons for that that I'll explain later. Yes. Um, but um, I kept doing it. Well, and that persistence is so important. And that actually leads to a question I have for you about how you've gone about finding performance opportunities, despite, you know, it seems like every performance around the world has just been canceled for so many opera companies, symphonies, um, smaller venues, concert halls. But yet, you are seemingly as busy as ever. So how have you readjusted as far as getting performance? Well, let's see, backtracking to the beginning of the quarantine, 
Um, I was in Russia and obviously there was no, everything was closed down, no live performing whatsoever. So I started streaming from my uh, social media accounts from uh, Facebook mainly, a little bit from Instagram and from the Russian network VK, which is also a large network like Facebook, but only in Russia. And, um, you know, there was something, at least uh, there was some sort of connection with, uh, with the people who, who wanted to uh, see it. I tried um, monetizing, at, uh, at least asking, you know, asking for donations uh, saying, hey, you know, this is the only form of live music right now. They consider this the replacement of live concerts that you right. normally buy tickets for. But uh, people are quite reluctant to change the, their mindset about, uh, you know, anything online is being kind of free or, um, you know, at the best having a subscription. But um, to actually like paying for online events is something um, that's. Um, I think it took took a while, and and it's still. I wouldn't say there's been like a full transition to uh, where where people feel like yeah, hey, online is a legit sort of thing where you pay for uh, online concerts. Also, on the other hand, it's not really the same thing. It's not the same thing for the artist. It's not the same thing for the audience um, as 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 live performance. So you can't really replace one with the other. On the other hand, it's if it's really the only thing we have, then we sort of have to go with that. So I've had sort of like a hybrid of uh, donation uh, streaming, and uh, lately I've switched, been switching to um, transitioning to uh, a ticketed events because I was really sick and tired of these iPhone videos with poor quality, and that's really the only thing you can do from your home. You have to invest into equipment, sound equipment. It's, it's quite a thing, and you know, for me, it's hard to do as an artist. I'm not that savvy with that stuff. It would take so I would prefer to actually have somebody do it for me. So this is where I'm at right now, and so I'm I'm going for quality. And the live streams that I'm doing, they're ticketed events, and it's in HD with professional sound, and usually it's from. Um, already um, existing live shows, small live shows that are happening yes. right now. So in, in that kind of format, because really, what another thing that I was going to say is that nothing replaces um, and will ever replace the presence of real people in the audience. No matter uh, how many likes and hearts you get on the other end of the uh, of the live stream, it, five people sitting across the room or across the lawn from you is what it takes to really create the magic of, the, of the, the, the live performing and that's how you get the energy that's how i get the energy um for small performances one type of energy for a big performance when you perform for a thousand people it's a it's a completely different kind of energy but it's tangible energy that can be i'm sure it can be measured it's not, it cannot be measured in um modern um you know physical equipment electrical or radio equipment but I'm sure it can be measured somehow and there are still laws that have not been discovered as far as like the waves um, of, of this energy exchange between um, people and between the audience and the artists it's, it's incredible I can just you know you I mean I, I'm talking to you like you don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you actually you know it firsthand and you've performed you've been on stage there those for, vibrations those yes, vibes that we uh, have and the visceral huge, experience yeah. With, especially when it's acoustic instruments in an intimate setting, like there is, there's nothing like it. And seeing it in a screen, it's still beautiful. But you know, like you said, it doesn't truly compare. Absolutely, but, but now, we still got to yeah, make money. We still got to eat. We got to do what we got to do. We got to go with what we have. So I had that, and then um, I finally made it back to the states um, in late spring, and uh, you know, just started doing what I could to see what the regulations were in Chicago. Could uh, have a you know, outdoor event for like 20, 30 people. That's what I started doing. I had flash mobs in Lincoln Park. Yes. Uh, I had uh, small performances on private lawns in uh, in the burbs uh, near Ravinia. Um, luckily, I had se several friends who very generously offered their land to host some of those sure. uh, socially distant lawn performances. That's brilliant. And so that a was Ravinia like incredible. experience, yeah, but exactly. a private event. Exactly. And uh, that was uh, a huge win-win for everyone, and the weather uh, was uh, was amazing. <laughs> I, I haven't been knock on 
new plastic uh, have not been rained on once and uh, uh, it's been great and now the latest city winery in Chicago has reopened for very small uh, socially distant shows and I'm, I have a pair this weekend uh, out of capacity of 400 they're open only for 50 I've seen the picture of uh, what it looks like it's it's kind of sad but this is what you know this is what we got to do and I'm very grateful for the opportunity of I'm going to stream one of those shows on HD as well, so that uh, more people can see it. And uh, this is where we're at. And in the meantime, I'm planning a tour in Russia and other European countries for the fall, where uh, the quarantine is kind of already been lifted, uh, being lifted oh, wow. little by little. And region like Russia is a very large country, and the, depending on the region, it, it varies really greatly the amount of restrictions. So in September I'm able to play eight shows in different cities and in October hopefully you're going kind of playing it by year hopefully playing a dozen more so something that's not in the cards in the states right now with uh, all of my big markets being Pacific Northwest and um, Atlantic Northeast being completely shut down you cannot even have a house concert for 20 people as of right now in Portland or Seattle or New York and um, that's really sad considering I've been taking some flights throughout the summer and some of those flights were full. Like we're talking 200 people, uh, like sardines breathing into each other's uh, ears and faces. And uh, that's, you know, that's okay, but it's, it, you know, it's not okay to have, um, you know, 50 people sitting on a, on a sparse uh, uh, territory. Um, that's a little, I, I think it's a little bit sad and, uh, possibly unfair but you know we have to go with um with what we uh with what we can we got to do the best uh of what we got right and it's totally unfortunate like you're saying it's not even possible in this country um but it's great that you can plan ahead and do a tour in russia i know some artists who are picking up work in europe these days so i personally have hope that will be getting back to, to normal, and this new normal won't Sooner be forever. Sooner or later, yeah. Exactly. Um, so speaking of travel, you did tell me a story about coming home. You know, after you got stranded in Russia, you came <laughs> back home, and you, or was it going there, that you had like a 72-hour uh, travel day? Going, trying to make, make it my, my way back to the States, yes. Could you tell that story? Because sure. it was just insane. So I finally had to make my way back, and uh, Russian borders were still closed with all over the countries pretty much and um, there were no flights but there were already flights between EU and the United States so I could book uh, a flight the closest city to St. Petersburg was uh, Tallinn Estonia which was well actually Helsinki Finland was the closest but there was no pedestrian crossing technically you cannot cross the border by foot but with Estonia another Baltic uh, country you could cross um, the border by foot. They had a pedestrian crossing, and uh, because the, there's no commercial transportation, so the only way to cross it is really by foot. I cannot take my personal car. I cannot have a taxi drive yeah. me to the other country. So I have to cross it by foot, technically. So Estonia had a, a pedestrian crossing. So and uh, uh, Tallinn from Saint Petersburg is only like 250 miles. So I took a cab to the border. I crossed the border by foot. I took a bus to uh, Tallinn, so the whole thing took about eight hours from St. Petersburg to Tallinn. I got on the flight, it was an evening flight, at that time it was at the best one flight per day between the two cities, so mm -hmm. it was an evening flight. I get to Helsinki, I have to stay at night at the airport, and I did some reading, it, it, it didn't show there were restrictions for American citizens, but then as I get there, I said, no, 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 you can't uh, leave the airport. Then I had already purchased a hotel room at the Helsinki airport, which is on the other side of the uh, customs border control. So I cannot get on the other side of the border control. So the hotel room gets forfeited and uh, I stay at the on the bench in the airport. And there were two other... You stayed overnight? Yeah, stayed overnight oh. there uh, with my with a backpack under my thing. And, uh, you know, I kind of got through it. A couple of... Uh, one, one girl, um, she was not prepared for that. She she went into quite a bit of a panic and kind of hysterics there really? at the airport. I don't think she's ever had to deal with anything like that. But I've done my share of, of sleeping at, at airports. And Glamorous life of an artist. Right. 
Um, so I, you know, I, I had a little shot. I probably know very much. And then next morning I had a flight to uh, London, Helsinki, London. And then same thing in London. I had to, uh, that Helsinki flight into London did not match up with the London to Chicago flight. So I had to stay another day in London airport because you could not leave the airport at all. So, and the airport was absolutely empty. I, I, have, I have pictures on Facebook of London Heathrow, and you know, you've, you've been there uh, it, on any given day, there's crowds of tens of thousands of people in Heathrow. Say it's crazy from all over the world. You hear every single language possible uh, there. You, you see people from all parts of the world. It's probably the biggest uh, layover hub in, in Europe, one of the biggest. And there was not a single person except a couple of cleaning personnel and um, nothing, nothing, nothing. All the gates are closed and, uh, you know, there may be like two, three flights out of each terminal there. So I was at the terminal Chicago, uh, London to Chicago, and there was nothing. It was London to Chicago and maybe New York. There were the only flights coming out of the terminal. So there was nothing there. All the news, everything was closed, 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 closed. There was bottled water. Everything was closed. No food, no drink, no snacks, no nothing. So, you know, I still made it um, intermittent fasting. It's great. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, it's good when you want to do it. Exactly. But, but when you kind of used to it, uh, you know how it works. You mentally prepared. It was okay. So I was drinking a lot of water, and uh, next day I finally get on the London to uh, um, Chicago flight, hoping to get some nice food, maybe a glass of wine, and uh, it turns out it's nothing but bottled water on, on the whole flight. They canceled all of the no food, meal and services drink, food and drinks. No, meal, no meals and no drinks. All right, I don't even, I don't even want to travel now. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, but those ladies were so nice. The, the BA crew, they were so awesome. They, um, after they I told them the story. They actually mustered up a meal for me from their own, what they had from their own food. That's incredible. They, they made me a little little platter of, of, of food. And uh, it was such a bittersweet uh, trip. They told me about their ordeal, uh, how the, the entire um, 41,000 of BA employees, including all the senior flight attendants and senior uh, airmen and, uh, and ground crew were fired. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was such an incredible flight, and uh, there was uh, it was just uh, a really incredible, uh, bittersweet experience. So. Yeah, I mean, airline professionals are affected too. I heard from a friend of mine that right. works for American Airlines that so many of them have been furloughed. Furloughed, laid off, and all, all sorts of things. Are and they can't even do on. online concerts like us, so I don't know. Exactly. What, I don't know what they're doing. Exactly. I mean, it's, I have. It, it's just a really tough spot, and. I also wanted to ask you, I know it's a bit of a sensitive subject, but when it comes to finances, I mean, do you advise artists, save your money, um, do you have any any thoughts on well, any thoughts on how to handle... Well, yes, of course, save a lot of money. <laughs> save, put money in for your, <laughs> for your retirement. <laughs> of course, it's... We don't it, talk about that. Right. Conservatories don't talk about that. It's but, just, it's never really emphasized. But the thing is, it's, it's hard. Making a living as a musician is hard. It's hard making ends meet. For many, many years, I barely had enough to get by. You know, with a with a small kid especially, I just literally had enough money to get by from month to month. So forget uh, saving money, forget saving money for medical expenses, forget uh, saving my, putting money away for advancement of your career, for your business uh, growth. You know, you gotta have some kind of budget for advertising, for for some kind of growth, for yeah. for making CDs, for making this and that. So for years I didn't have that, and then little by little I started, you know, being able to do all of those things. Little by little, little by little, to the point where I must say it was a pretty lucky situation for me that I had saved a little bit of person. I had a little bit of personal savings put away, and also I I've, I've had some money put away for. Uh, business uh, projects like new CDs, uh, new, new CD, some advertisement, some sort of operational budget, operational budget of my business. But, um, it's kind of the worst thing you can possibly do, start putting, pulling money out of your operational bu budget of your business right. because it's kind of 
it's like shining a plane engine in flight that uh, trying to save gas yes. that maybe you know it maybe it will restart <laughs> and you will save gas sometime before you hit the ground but it, it, there's a good chance it may not restart altogether so it's kind of it's the same thing with any kind of business like once you start pulling money away once it's like not operational operating fully there's a good chance that uh, and this is the reason why we see so many businesses uh, shutting down of all sorts so uh, I was also lucky very lucky that um, with the release of my last album um, I had a couple of tracks that made it to radio uh, to satellite radio and this is one thing uh, that kind of possibly saved me through thing. It's actually the first time in my life where I got a small, like a, a significant, not significant, but like a noticeable chunk of, of royalty from play. Which, which album and which track? Else is, um, per me per te. Per me per te, okay. So it's been playing on uh, on Sirius for several months. Which station or uh, is it? Spa, Spa Channel. Oh, okay, I'm going <laughs> to take a listen. 68, Spy Instrumental. That's awesome. Congratulations. And, uh, I don't know if they're still playing it, but since January through like April or May, they were, they've were they been playing it. Because everything else, Spotify, iTunes, it's you, you could have uh, tens of thousands of people listening to your music every day. And it's um, it's really nothing. You cannot realize you make, get money anything. Of, make money of playing live shows. It's really no, nothing else. It's a few pennies that I, I put all, all of that goes directly in, into back into my, my business, you know, I, I spend a lot of money on advertisement, uh, promoting my music, even without any reason. It's not like I only promote live shows. I promote my music just to people, to any people who I think might be interested in my music without absolutely any, um, any, uh, anything. I'm not trying to sell them. I'm not trying to sell them. I promote uh, my music in countries where I know people don't buy music. They only listen to it for free. In like 80% of the countries, 95% of the people, they listen to it for free. They don't pay for it. And it's just the reality of the situation. Or and they have I a Spotify subscription or Apple. Spotify. Music. They and don't it, have Spotify in, in those Oh, countries, in those countries. Part. But if they do, most of the time, they listen to the free version of the Spotify okay. with ads. So, and still, yeah, Spotify is really... So I still promote my music, even in countries where I don't play. Just in hopes that, you know, my music will, A, make difference in people's lives and B, uh, will, uh, I will have an opportunity to go and play in that country sooner or later. So for me, the more people uh, listen to me around the globe, the, the better. That's my first goal. Second goal is uh, um, actually making a difference beyond just listening to music. What, what else can my music do? Can it... Uh, uh, Make a difference about how uh, people feel, uh, how the, uh, inspiring them on a on a global scale for something better to make a difference in their lives, especially young people, right. and uh, or maybe a, a difference uh, in on some kind of a global scale. Music bringing people together, bringing different cultures, and right. you know, uh, music uh, bringing peace in m m more than one way. Or and can I cheer could, them I up. Could talk, you yeah. know, just put them in a better mood. Exactly. That's huge. Um, and only third is uh, really third is uh, monetizing it and what, whatever. And you know, I hate the word monetizing. Making money, making a living, making a living as a musician. It's like it's number three. Really, it's like okay, with all it number one and two. Uh, now I gotta, you know, I gotta pay the bills, and I gotta, I want to be able to grow, not just pay the bills, but my next big concern is uh, growing my brand, whatever yes. you call it, business, brand, uh, name, uh, whatever you call it. Um, it's again, it's getting out to as many people, uh, reaching out to new audiences uh, and all of that stuff. And it takes it takes a lot of money. Uh, it used to be a different, you know, 20, 30 years ago where it, it was really the only way was to uh, land uh, a contract with a label and then they do everything for you and all you do is you know pretty much play and um, but now it, it's I think it's much better now because you're in control as an independent artist you're in control 
of your music. You're in control of, what, of your content, of what you want to write, of what you want to post, of what, where you want to take your music. Of course, you know, you're less likely to make a million dollars on it, but we're not, majority of us are not in it for for a million dollars. And uh, we wouldn't pursue music right, if we were exactly, trying to get rich. That's, exactly, I love that exactly. you pointed that yeah. out because, you know, we so, do it because there's a the passion there. Exactly. If you want to make a million dollars, do something else. Go into finance. Um, yeah, go into finance, and then you can still do music on the side. I know a lot of very accomplished people who make a lot of money who are incredible musicians, incredible musicians. There's a festival in New York uh, for a big foundation called Also A Leg To Stand On. It's all um, a lot of businessmen, a lot of um, uh, Wall Street folks cool. uh, play there. And I, but I was really fortunate to be part of it uh, a few years ago. And it was incredible how many amazing musicians, there were amazing musicians there were who who were uh, part of the festival, who were brokers, the finance guys, the uh, businessmen, all, all sorts of the yeah. lawyers. And uh, incredible, absolutely incredible. It's just people that chose to do something else. Very different people that chose not to pursue Those are the smart really. ones. Yeah, you know. Right. <laughs> and it doesn't, they still had all, everything. They had the soul, they had the passion, they had everything. They just had something to do for a living. But if you're pursuing music as your main, um, you can do a lot more with music, uh, and if you do it for a living, you can set yourself some huge goals, you can challenge yourself, you can become really good, you can become really good at marketing, you can become really good at a lot of things if you choose to do it for, for as a main bread. But don't count on, on making a million dollars. Always have that picture, like first thing is always, what is it there, what, what kind of um, satisfaction do you get out of it and what do you think people get out of it? If there is no con connection between you and your audience, you cannot just sell something. To yeah. them. It's, it's, it's true about any business, not only about music. There's really no point in a business that just sells product to people without really a personal connection. If there's no personal connection in business, it's, it's 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 crappy business. Yes. Well, you brought up the word marketing many times, and you know, I I admire how you operate as a true entrepreneur in the music industry. And you know, like you said, you always have to be promoting and marketing and getting the word out there. And it's for the benefit of the audience and the people out there. And like you mentioned, the third thing is trying to make a living and trying to stay afloat and you know, keep it keep it going for a lifetime. So I definitely admire you for that. So the last thing I wanted to ask you today is about, you know, if there's anything that you wanted to promote about your career, upcoming performances. I do know that you're performing two concerts at City Winery this weekend, but by the time this airs, those shows will be over. So anything else on your on your agenda? Well, uh, I'm still promoting my uh, last album came out uh, last November, and because of the COVID. Uh, everything, a lot of promotion has been delayed, so I'm still technically promoting. By now, I should have already had a, a new album out, but I'm still in the middle of promoting the old album. See how album. this guy works? A new album every year? That's so, that's ambitious. Well, ideally, ideally yeah. or at least a new single. I'm probably going to have a new single in a couple of months. Uh, hopefully, a new album by next spring, you know, so maybe you're sooner. Talking about the album Perme Perfect. Sembre. 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 Sembre ah, the, okay. Um, album. Uh, Premier Perte is one of the compositions from it. Sorry, we're like operating all these Italian uh, names. I just like saying but that. It, so. Exactly. <laughs> it's because the whole theme of the album was inspired by music of Italian neoclassical composers. So that's why I called majority of those tunes in uh, Italian. Maybe next one is going to be inspired by France and all of the tunes are going to be uh, titled in French. Maybe in another language. I haven't decided yet. But yes, yeah, so there's a lot of languages uh, out there, yeah, so you exactly. can keep adding to your vocabulary. Sempre uh, Italian for always, and uh, it's, there's some really good stuff there. Uh, take a listen. Uh, I'm probably gonna come out with a couple of music videos, two music from uh, from that album. One of them I'm gonna shoot in Armenia because wow. that uh, track was inspired by music uh, by Armenia, and I'm definitely gonna try to make it, uh, you know, quarantine permitting, make it there. This and shoot that video there. It's 
Amazing. Uh, another one I want to shoot in my hometown, St. Petersburg, where I'm going next week. And I'm actually going to spend the fall in Russia because there's more live opportunities. I can actually play for decent sized venues, size venues in many cities, and many cities are opening. And hopefully, I should be able to go to uh, some of the EU countries and perform there too. In the meantime, I'm hoping that things will get better here in the States by uh, New Year. And um, I'm definitely going to be streaming a lot of. Uh, the con a lot of concerts from Russia in HD, uh, live concerts with with real people in the audience, but streamed in HD and good quality. So, right. and uh, it's going to be available for a very nominal uh, fee because it costs a lot of money actually to uh, even have a production of, of streaming. It easily costs several hundred uh, dollars. And so, yeah, I have to sell first 30, 20, 30 tickets to sell it, it just. Uh, Goes to cover the cost uh, of the production, if I'm if I'm lucky to sell that many, um, and uh, you know they're very reasonable. They're usually ten fifteen dollars per per ticket for those live streams, and you can watch them live. You can watch them later if you like, and you can watch them as many times as you like after that. Uh, right. It's they're yours to keep pretty much. Right. Those things. The so uh, modern day VHS or DVD. Yeah. So. Right. Um, yeah. And it's something unique. It's something, uh, you know, something one of a kind that you become part of uh, that experience. Great. Well, I'll definitely spread the word about that uh, and post all of your links along with the interview. But thank you so much for doing this with me today. And um, I look forward to seeing how your career continues to grow and develop. Thank you so much, Marisa. And best of luck to you, too. And uh, thank you. I hope our musical paths cross uh, sooner than later. Me, too. We're yeah, overdue. I know. <laughs> for sure. Thank yes, you so much. Thank you.